What's up YouTube? My name is the Lazy Triard and today I'm going to be bringing the first actual tutorial in which we're going to be getting into the code uh, and the bare bones of the wonderful framework that is libgdx. Now to start off uh, this tutorial I thought it'd be pretty good to kind of go through each of these uh, folders and check out the uh, initial project layout uh, for each one of them and kind of understand the anatomy of each one of them so let's start off with the core project so just click this open source com and then the tutorial dot java now you get this these are all imported um, things and you just this is just like on when you start up any lib gdx project this is going to be the default so let's just start breaking some of this down. The onCreate method the, is the overarching method that essentially initializes everything. Uh, it basically sets everything up. Now it's called only once. So we just these things are set once and they're never set again. They're start, set from the start and then after that we have to rely on the either the update or the render or the resize which in this one we don't have an update because it's an app it implements an application listener uh, we're later going to change that to game uh, because we're, that's just what we're going to be using so just think of the on create as kind of like the thing that starts everything it lays the foundation uh, next you have the dispose which we really don't need to worry about that just know that it kind of handles getting rid of the textures once we close the uh, program so that the computer or the Android device doesn't have to deal with that. Uh, the render deals with the graphic part of the assignment. So right now we're just going to work like you see these gdx.gl that essentially sets the background color uh, of the project. Uh, one 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 is I think that's black, uh, but it takes four color or f takes four different numbers, which kind of just sets the range of values. Uh, and then gl.clear just clears the screen so that it can re-render it. Uh, the batch.set <laughs> projection matrix is essentially, it, it's basically, right now just think of it as kind of, it sets the coordinate system for where uh, all the uh, images are drawn. So if you want to draw an image at 0, 0, this is going to set with that uh, coordinate system is at and camera dot combined we'll worry about that once we get into cameras uh, and then these don't necessarily we're not going to deal with a pause and the resume right now uh, the resize we're not going to really deal with as well but this is kind of like the update method if we want like it's going to be called consistently and it's going to basically be able to manipulate uh, different parts of the program if we want to do like uh, if we want to make it move that's going to have to update the position if we uh, click like a WASD like move it left or right up and down so getting into the more deep things let's start off with the camera the camera is essentially like the window uh, in which our game takes place uh, so if we run this we're gonna basically see this is like the window the game is obviously much bigger but we get this window of let's see where did we uh, initialize the camera okay you see right here uh, orthographic camera one uh, H and W now that is essentially setting the window or the the window uh, width and the window height and that essentially just sets the window of the camera next um, we don't really have to deal with, again we cameras that's pretty much going to stay the same. Uh, we're not going to deal with a lot of like changing the camera. That will just change like how the zoom uh, and how our characters or whatever we're trying to uh, focus on moves and like their size and whatnot. The sprite batch, which is the main thing that essentially draws everything to the screen, uh, is in the render. That's not going to be anywhere else unless you want to. Uh, you have to like set it in the initialization. But basically, this is the frame. This is like this is 101, like Sprite Batch 101. You have to have a batch.begin. That's essentially telling the computer that you are going to draw something. And then you have to have a batch.end, which is telling the computer you are not going to draw anymore. Uh, this is just really good for efficiency because, like, the, like, the computer just knows when and when not to. Uh, point being, like, just always put anything you're going to draw 
uh, within the batch.begin and batch.end. And right now we just have the sprite.draw. And I'll go into sprites next. Sprites and textures. Okay, so a texture is essentially like the picture or the image uh, that we're like trying to draw on the screen. So this would entail being like this, just like the picture itself, the libgdx uh, logo. This is one image being drawn. What a sprite does is it adds characteristics uh, to that texture or to whatever you're trying to do so that uh, we can like watch the position, the, you know, let's see, you can set the size of the um, sprite, you can set the origin and the position. This is just, this makes it a lot easier to uh, set, like, if you're trying to do movement and it, it'll base, you can just do sprite set, set position. Uh, and then set whatever you want it to be. It's really good for updating and essentially it's just like an overall pretty general concept uh, for that. And then we, let's see, the texture, just like when you're dealing with a texture, just know new texture, that's just initializing it, and the GDX files out internal. Uh, this is basically, don't worry too much about it, this is just accessing the file and this is a GDX's version of um, doing that. It's essentially just like you're you're trying to get the file, you're loading the file into this texture, and you have to say all these fancy words like internal, uh, and don't really worry about that right now. Just know that like that's how you access a file. The texture dot set filter is just adding a fancy filter. Honestly, we could get rid of it, and it would all, it would work just the same. Um, and we really don't have to worry about that. And then, let's see, oh, okay, texture region. That's essentially like, it takes a texture and it kind of like adds a square to it. So like, it's not a pixel, but like it takes like a chunk of the image and it essentially like just put, it's, it's exactly like, it, like it, it's like a square um, and you kind of divide it from that. And then this is where the sprite and the texture collide. The sprite equals new sprite region. That's essentially casting this texture region uh, into this sprite. So now this texture that we're adding and changing uh, has a size. So we can set the size, we can set the origin, we can set the position. Uh, and I think we can determine a bunch of different things. Uh, just do if you if you want to just like explore while you're away, just type in like sprite and just like go through all these. There's documentation for all of this, so like we can find out all this all these different things, and it's just really helpful when you're trying to uh, develop like a sprite engine. Excuse me, or just developing a bunch of different characters. It's nice to not have to worry about handling all that. Uh, with different things and like having to code all that. So I think that's just like a ba that's a basic lowdown of the tutorial. Now let's go to the uh, main. Now the main is in the tutorial desktop version and this is essentially like all of these even like HTML, like HTML1 and the iOS they're all gonna have kind of the same structure. They're gonna have the application configuration CFG uh, CFG title tutorial. The, the CFG title is basically uh, this. I mean, it's kind of like the title. So, like tutorial 101, uh, we run that and save that. Always save that. It's just going to be up. It's just the title of the uh, window. We don't really have to worry about that. CFG uh, dot u use gl. Uh, that's 2.0. It says 20, but you can't do periods. That's just like. Uh, do you want to use OpenGL? Uh, 2.0, and for right now we're gonna say yes. That just it just makes it a lot easier uh, adding images later on. And then finally, CFG dot width and CFG dot height is just like the image, uh, or excuse me, the window size or resolution. So let's actually change this to uh, 1080 by 720 because that's gonna be like a that's gonna be your like I'll, I'll probably change it later, but this is like a resolution of like a normal game and then we can resize it, we can do all that fun stuff and the nice thing about libgdx is it'll resize everything uh, it won't, you won't have to like set like all these different parameters for when things are resized you don't have to redraw it which is really nice so that's really it for the tutorial on desktop 
Uh, finally, the Android, which the Android one takes a little more uh, things to get used to. Uh, like the other ones, you have the, or like the desktop version, you kind of have like the Android application. It's this, it's CFG, but it's an Android application configuration, which is different than the other one. Essentially, just don't worry about any of this. This this is like on Android applications as it is. is don't worry about that. Um, but the thing about Android is you can set a bunch of different things. Uh, you can do CFG dot. Okay, hit a period, dear lord. Uh, CFG dot, and you have all these different things like use accelerometer, which is kind of like the tilting and like. Like never played like Cube Runner, a game like that where you have to tilt it, and that's like the controls. That's what the accelerometer is. Um, so if you want, we'll set it to false right now because we're not using it. We're probably going to use it later on when we develop the game. But it saves a lot of battery life if you set some of these things to false because then the computer doesn't or the Android device doesn't have to register that. Uh, and then finally, we're not going to use the compass, but um, there's also the CFG.use compass. And I don't need a compass. We're not making like a nav system or anything like that. So we're always going to set that to false. But just like, again, play with this. Just like go through all these and kind of see. Because honestly, I don't know what all these are. But I'm sure if like I took the time to actually look at all these, I, I'd get a fairly m better uh, perspective on it. But that's essentially for that. Uh, and then finally, we're going to deal with this Android manifest. Now, Android manifest, that's like overall, that's not libgdx, that's like every uh, Android development, like you, every Android application has a manifest. Um, if we start this up, we just see a bunch of uh, XML, actually you probably see this manifest. Uh, go to the XML, I like the XML, I don't really know XML, but I know generally speaking like what I'm doing. Uh, you have things like the Android name, uh, the label, stuff like that. And what right now, what I want you to see is the Android uh, set screen orientation. You can, it's either landscape or portrait. Portrait. There we go. Dang it. Um, but you can set all of this. Like you can set very, very um, important things that. Uh, are kind of needed in this. We're going to actually set this back to landscape for right now. Uh, the version code, you have to do that when you're uploading to the Google Play Store and you have to like constantly update it when you actually update your game, uh, which we're not going to worry about that right now because Lord knows we've not gotten anywhere close to making a game. Um, but generally, that's a pretty, pretty good overview of kind of all of the uh, things that we're going to deal with. Uh, one last thing, just like the assets folder, uh, this is in the tutorial Android and the desktop. This isn't in the uh, core projects, but we don't have to worry about that. If you see, if you look at this, like, this is the image. This is like the image that we're using in our game, um, or in the window that's in there right now. We're going to store all of our textures, all our fonts, all of that fun stuff uh, in here, and we're going to like have different folders for like like I said, like fonts, you, you want to keep it fairly organized. But the nice thing about if you put it, if you put any resource in the assets folder in the Android, it'll automatically update for the desktop as well. Now it doesn't look, actually it does look like that. Uh, it'll be a package in the desktop version and it'll like, it'll, it'll just like update it automatically. So like if we delete this, um, you see in here, that's also deleted. Now I'm going to undo that for now because it'll break everything. Uh, but that is a basic overview, so uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please notify me in the comment section. I love that comment section uh, because I get to respond, like talk to you guys and actually hear your side of the story. I don't just hear myself talking. So again, if you have any questions, please let me know and I can help you out early rather than later when we're kind of deeper in uh, developing these different games. So thank you for watching. Uh, please rate, subscribe, comment all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.